Weird Australia. The series where I explore this great and ancient country's strangest stories with unsolved mysteries. Today, we delve into a personal favourite of mine, the Yowie. And no, I don't mean these guys. Oh, I can't find where I threw that. Oh, there it is, thank you. <laughs> Don't let it, guys. I'll be your host, Ruby Rabbit, and without further ado, we travel into the deep bushland where things can get a little... weird. For centuries, bone-chilling tales of the Quinkin, the Jugabina, the Jarawara, the Dulaga, or the Hairy Man, have haunted the memories of Aboriginal peoples. Strange and terrifying tales have been passed down from generation to generation, and though his name may differ depending on the region in which he was seen, the message is always the same. Beware the Hairy Man. Beware. If you're walking up the mountain and you start to feel a little bit sleepy, that's his presence. He'll try to put you to sleep, but if you sit down and have a bit of a snooze, he'll get at you. He has this mesmeric power that makes you drowsy and confused about where you are and what you're doing. And then he can actually call you to him. The earliest mentions of the Yowie, of course, come from our First Nations peoples. Most Aboriginal communities on the east coast of Australia have some form of Yowie law wound into their traditions, practices and beliefs, including the very unsettling idea that the Yowie possesses preternatural powers. Many native peoples even went as far as to warn colonial settlers about the Yowies and the danger they posed. Despite the warnings though, many settlers, farmers, timber croppers and the like found themselves face to face with the strange creatures and there is no shortage of documentation to please the eager reader. Sightings in Australia date back beyond the 1900s and are still continuing to occur pretty regularly today. Tales of the Yowie predate its international cousins. Across time, there have been countless experiences and encounters with the fearsome creatures, and the one seemingly common thing about every single case is the certainty in the teller of what they saw. came from the south, walked through the clearing, the sun was on it so I could see that it uh, when it came out of the, the bush into the clearing, it was quite massive, quite huge I'd say, at least eight foot. It was unforgettable, it was like a, an ape, but um, like, like quite a lot bigger than any sort of ape you'd normally see, I think. And very much like a human walk. I've got friends that are pushing seven foot. I do know I'm the seven foot, but this thing tower, towered above those blokes. They're very, very big, very broad, very deep through the chest. That's just how I would describe it. Extremely robust. Just a, a massive thing, like a massive version of a man. I'd say it was probably um, a dark rust colour 
like a reddish gingery sort of a colour. The hair was pretty much like a gorilla or an ape. It wasn't short, but it was reasonably long and matted, I imagine. He looked unkempt. We walked into the shrubbery on the north end of the clearing bit where the spring was and gone for it. I stood there for about another 20 minutes possibly, just looking, hoping it would come back again with my eyes wide open. But uh, they didn't. So the thing that kept me sane was that I went down to the Prince Alfred Hotel that afternoon and I said, I saw this thing today that was huge. And um, just walked across and they all knew where the spring was on this particular dairy. And, uh, oh yeah, that'd be the Bobble Mountain Yowie. And, I'd never heard of it, and apparently there had been some sightings over the years of this thing, and it was a, a fairly well-known local thing. Just common knowledge in the pub, either, you know, the Bobble Mountain, yeah, we, uh, another one, another sighting. Well, I heard a rustle in the bush, and I just thought it was a kangaroo or duck. But then I'm like, looked over it, and it's like, chasing me on that side of the creek, you know, keeping up with me. Now I was in like four fifth gear band, which is like over 60 k's off of those bikes. It had crept up the side of the vehicle and was on the dirt side of the road with my vehicle, whatever this thing was. So it looked like a giant red setter. I just thought it was a deer getting up at first until it stood well above all the low shrub and then I was just sort of uh, a little bit frozen, a little bit startled. This thing stood up and it would have been about probably eight feet high, covered in shaggy, browny coloured hair and it just stood there looking at me. Um, it follows me along the road for quite a period of time. I start speeding up. I've looked at my speedo. I'm nearly 100 clicks by this stage. It's still beside me. My dog's absolutely going burp. Would have paused for about three or four seconds and then just took off at bloody full speed. <laughs> Sweet dreams. There are other commonalities amongst the stories as well, such as a foul-smelling odour, incredible strength, speed and stealth, the ability to walk bipedally as well as on all fours, engaging in the snapping of large trees and the throwing of rocks to communicate, a preternatural and overwhelming sense of terror in the experiencer, the sense that this creature was neither man nor animal, but something separate, something supernatural. With mountains of case files and clear comparative elements, one is inevitably left wondering, what is going on? Of course, the answer is far from simple. A world away in Canada is the legend of the Sasquatch. Here, he takes on distinctly Canadian characteristics. Benevolent, limber, lithe, suitable for the region's colder climate and wooded environment. Across the way, you'll hear stories of Bigfoot, and here he takes on a slightly different appearance again, stockier, shorter haired, and more ape-like. The same region-specific traits are depicted in the Russian Yeti, and the Chinese Yeren. These creatures are depicted and spoken of as though they are a natural part of their local environments, as earthly beings that somehow also maintain a preternatural separation from humanity. These legends come primarily from ancient civilizations that had little to no exposure to the world's primate species, or even to each other. So what does this all mean? That humans the world over lack imagination? Some people think so. Others have very different explanations. It's a hoax. For as long as there have been truth tellers, there have also been liars, scammers and frauds, 
And while the press originally and now the internet have provided countless invaluable avenues down which genuine researchers and diehard believers can go, it has also muddied the waters, making the search for clarity and truth extremely convoluted. There are more fakes and frauds today than at any time in history thanks to the emergence of cheap and affordable and widely accessible cameras, devices, apps and programs designed to make Hollywood producers out of the average joke. And with more economical incentive and social payoff than ever before, those wanting to get rich or famous quick have no shortage of gullible followers to post and repost their fake news. The sightings are a result of mental illness, a brain snap, or a hallucination. While many such strange experiences absolutely can be traced back to individuals with poor mental health, it is important to note that none of the sightings that I have showcased in this video can be genuinely categorized as such. I thought a pig had gotten loose and was scrubbing amongst the trees. I went into the forest to see if I could find it. I heard the grunting again, but I couldn't find any tracks. Then something made me look up, and there, about 12 feet in front of me, was this big, black, hairy man thing. It looked more like a gorilla than anything. It had huge hands, and one of them was wrapped around a sapling. We seemed to stand there, staring at each other for about 10 minutes, before it suddenly gave off a foul smell that made me vomit. Then it just made off sideways and disappeared. According to his widow, Percy took to his bed for two days after the encounter having been overcome with shock. She insists that it was not in his nature to play practical jokes or deliberately frighten his children with a fabricated story. The point I want to make is that there is no fiction about my experience. I saw this beast in daylight around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Before, I might have agreed they were comic book stuff, but no more. They exist all right. They are real animals, perhaps a subspecies of ape that resulted from divergent evolution. At one time during Earth's history, the planet's continents were all joined together to form the supercontinent known as Gondwana. Over time, the continents drifted apart and still continue to drift today. The existence of plant and animal species that share physical and behavioural traits with other plant and animal species found nowhere near them but in similar environments, is what scientists consider evidence of divergent evolution. Some examples that I've used of this in the past have been coyotes and dingoes, and crocodiles and alligators. Some people believe that the existence of yaoi's can be explained using this theory, that at some point in time, these creatures were members of another ape family, and due to factors such as migration, climate change, or mutation, branched away and formed a secondary species that has somehow managed to continue on, barely changed for millennia. Or they're not animals, they're the missing link. Before our planet's last ice age, apes appeared around the late Eocene period, having evolved from the old world monkeys and lemurs. When the forest began to disappear, the apes came down out of the trees and changed their diet. And many people believe that it was this change that primarily triggered the ape's evolution into hominids. Each time a new skull or bone is found in the wilderness, we hope it will be the one to complete the picture we so desperately desire of our own human origins. The picture is not yet complete, sorry Lucy, and some people believe that that's because the missing link never died out, but migrated and adapted. Or there's supernatural beings and science just can't explain them, yet. How have these creatures managed to remain so elusive despite growing human interest, the shrinking of the wilderness, and the advancement of technology? Well, some, particularly the native populations, believe that Yowies possess supernatural abilities such as the power to entrance or hypnotize. So perhaps it is their spiritual nature that has shielded them from greater scrutiny. Science is still looking for solid evidence of God, so it stands to reason that there are and always will be creatures, beings, and forces of life that our human limitations simply prevent us from understanding. For me, the idea that science might be finished, that we might someday have all the answers, is tragic. 
Part of the excitement of this world lies in its mysteries and its unanswered questions. And who's to say that no answer isn't itself an answer? And while none of this is certain, what is certain is the sincerity in those who have shared their stories with the world. They need no convincing. They know what they saw. Me? I kind of like not having the answer. So, what about you?